Welcome to our free live trading session, guys. It's Ricky with TechFood Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having an amazing Friday. Today is September 29th. I'm going to start sharing my screen so you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at. Uh, we did have a series of economic reports that were being released uh, that that were released during today's pre-market session, and the big one were, uh, was PCE prices and, of course, personal spending. Uh, personal spending and personal income came coming in a little bit lower than what was expected, but PCE prices and PCE core both either as expected at 0.4% or a little bit better than what was expected at 0.1% of an increase. So overall NASDAQ market opening up in the green 1% for QQQ. And this is again, a step in the right direction for the bulls, right? We talked about this. We've been waiting for this bounce off of this uh, uh, previous support range right around 355. Now we're testing around 360 and we'll see. We'll see if we continue to show progress towards the moving average or if the bulls end up giving back some room um, or, or some of this um, by the time the market opens. So everything looks incredibly bullish as of right now. Everything looks like it's forming higher highs, higher lows, all that good stuff. So we'll see if that momentum continues. Uh, we do tend to see uh, from our live sessions uh, quick changes of direction from time to time. Um, we'll see if this happens today, right? Right at market open, we'll see if things begin to change. We have 20 seconds right before market opens. I, again, want to thank you guys for taking time and watching this live session. Um, I want to remind you that, again, um, if you end up uh, liking what you see and you want to end up joining our LPP team, it's the second link in the description down below. Uh, it's $175 off, and it's our biggest discount that we will ever offer. So just know that that's there for you, and it's all linked in the description. So here we go. Looks like NASDAQ still indicating signs of an uptrend. All right, there it goes. 1.05%. 361.80. We just made new highs on the day. We'll see if this continues. Again, one of my biggest focuses is just making sure that I enter a trade that is showing continuous signs of progress. People would look at this and naturally be like, okay, well, this is green. This is bullish during the pre-market session. This has to go up. That's not necessarily the case. There's been many times that I've been faked out like this uh, with a very similar setup where everything is looking bullish. It's in favor of the bulls. But then all of a sudden, right when the market opens, there's a quick change of direction. Again, I can only speak from my experience. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. To you. Uh, you let me know. Um, in the in the live chat i do want to remind you that if you want to partake in the live chat by either asking questions or whatever the case might be uh, you do have to be subscribed to the channel so just a little heads up on that all right here it goes testing that ema as a potential support right around 361.40 we'll see if we continue to hold above and if we do hold above again that's in favor of the bulls if we begin to show progress on the downside then again maybe we can retrace back to uh, where we were right before these reports came out but no there it goes still holding um, above this ema respecting um, these higher highs and higher lows that we were forming during that pre-market session. I mean, market looks pretty pretty bullish. It looks pretty strong right now. It's still very early, so I don't want to force a trade if I'm still not certain on which side it's going to choose to go, right? So this is, this is kind of the complicated part. That's very simple. It's complicated because it really challenges your ability to stay disciplined um, and, and to wait for a proper setup. But it's worth it once once it actually ends up reversing or forming higher highs um, it's worth it at, at that state so if you have any questions throughout this live session please do not hesitate to um, ask and again feel free to just partake in that live chat so we got the nasdaq market right below or right behind me All right, we have Chicago PMI report coming out in the next 13 minutes. So let's just make sure that we keep that in mind. It's not a super major economic report, but 
it should influence the market to some degree, but it looks like every economic report coming out as of right now, even though if it's not necessarily better than what was expected, right? Because uh, we have these personal income spending, uh, personal income and personal spending, not necessarily better than what was expected. Um, but still, again, markets are rising and I'm not too sure if it's just because on the technical side, right? Approaching that general support range, we're finally beginning to show signs of a reversal. Are we going to continue to show signs of progress on the upside or are we going to begin to retrace our way back down? That's kind of the big question to ask ourselves right now. Here it goes. Do you see how it gapped up? It showed no signs of progress up here, showing signs of resistance and how we run the risk of a potential pullback. That's what I w I'm waiting to see. So are we going to get rejected here and begin to sell off and retrace to the moving average or are we going to consolidate long enough here that it's actually just going to continue to form higher highs and higher lows. I'm un unsure, right? So why, why pretend that we can predict the future when we can just wait for direction to be more clear? And there it goes. Strong push for the bulls. Let's see. Can we show any signs of progress? Higher highs, lower lows, just something. Something that, that is not consolidation, right? Consolidation is not a clear direction, so let's make sure that we're aware of that. All right. Wow, big rejection there. Do you still use your trading journal every day? Yep. I try to the best of my ability, right? Try to stay consistent both on my good days and on my red days. So um, it's good just to know what we could have done better. Have you added for your swing trade? I haven't opened a swing trade yet. So if you didn't pay attention to yesterday's video, there was no adding to a swing trade that hasn't been opened yet, right? It's still very early with a potential reversal um, on QQQ. So I'm still choosing to stay patient, right? It's not like I'm just throwing money at QQQ or TQQQ right now just because it's green. Um, I mean, in a perfect world, yes, we do have confirmation above EMA on the one hour time frame, But again, it's when it pulls on back. I want to see if it holds, holds above if we get that pullback, there's sometimes that NASDAQ just rallies and it doesn't pull on back. And if we have that kind of setup, again, I'm all for it. I just want to see signs of progress. We're not even showing signs of higher highs or higher lows here. And there it goes, pulling on back. Uh, below EMA testing this general support range again a lot of consolidation here no clear direction to me this is uncertain I, I don't know which way we're going to go just yet so I give it time that's all there's there's no magic trick for me there's no I'm not looking at a magic indicator we're, we're just paying attention to price action right now um, you know which way is is NASDAQ heading is it going to remain bullish is it going to you know, reverse and be bearish. We don't know, right? This is what consolidation means. So we're trying to stay patient and give it the time that it needs for it to identify its direction. There it goes. Testing support range, same support. All right, bouncing right off that. I'm really hoping that today is the last trading day of the month for the month of September. I'm hoping we get clear direction just something. I don't care if it's bullish. I don't care if it's bearish, right? It's these choppy days that I would love to avoid. So there it goes. It's showing signs of it pulling back, right? Kind of. 
It's just really slow. Let's see if the bears really begin to kick in. Nope. Green candle right after. Let's see if it follows. Closes in the red. Beautiful. Come on. Something. I needed to pull back enough for it to be attractive to get into TQQQ or to sell off hard enough to jump into SQQQ. Beautiful. Yeah, let me see it in the live chat. How many of you guys are tuning on in for the first time to one of these uh, free live sessions? I, mean, I know there's a handful of you that just to uh, choose to tune on in, obviously, when we host it from time to time. But for those that are tuning in for the first time, let me see it. What's going on, Kimmy? What's going on, Sebastian? What's up, what's up? What's going on, Jesus? Robert? Blake? There it goes. Big green candle all the way back up. And this is the frustrating part. There's no clear direction there. Sweet. I, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your Friday. I know it's early morning for a lot of you guys in the West Coast like myself. So I... I I hope that we have a ideal setup here where I can take some pretty solid trades for you guys. But again, the part of trading that not enough people talk about is also knowing when to not open a position, right? So hope that you learned something new. I hope that I earned your thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel as again, I would love to stay connected and answer any questions you might have. Which way are we going? Uh, how many of you guys have a bad tendency to enter a position too early when direction is unclear? And I'll, I'll throw my hand up for that too. This is something that I continue to work on, right? This is why I've made videos that I have before. Uh, you know, people think that as you begin, as you start trading and, you know, after a number of years and you begin to do well, that you're like, oh, okay, that guy doesn't make the same mistakes that I make. It's like, at least in my experience, it still comes in sessions, right? It still comes in seasons where, you know, there's there's weeks that I'm just like working so well with the market, right? It's like almost hard to take a bad trade, right? My my, my discipline is is just refined. My ability to wait for proper confirmation, whatever the case might be, right? Everything is going well. And then there's times where I literally feel every trade that I take markets against me, right? And this is, I'm sure, a feeling that a lot of people are very familiar with. So I want to remind you that, um, again, kind of like right now, when we're seeing a lot of this consolidation, I know normally we would be quick to judge and be like, okay, uh, I think market's going to go up. So I'm going to go into TQQQ. Or I think market's going to go down. So I'm going to go into SQQQ. But we didn't wait for proper confirmation. And I know that that has been uh, an issue even for myself or sometimes I even take a light position where I wish I could be more disciplined and be like, hey, no, I'll, I'll hold back and I'll wait for true confirmation and then I can make a more informed decision. Am I going to be a bull or am I going to be a bear, right, for the day or for that specific trade? So, um, yeah, I, I just want to remind you that as, as you continue to pursue this, that it's not going to just be like, okay, I, I've made a good habit of waiting for confirmation. I don't have to worry about it anymore, right? It doesn't work like that, at least not for me. It's it's every day. Every day you have to show up. Every day presents new challenges. So it's important to note. That's why I use the wish indicator. <laughs> I like that. All right, we're showing a lot of volatility here, right? A lot of quick movement on this candle. So three minutes left and then we have, um, what's it called? Chicago PMI report, still consolidating and we're still holding above the moving average. So this is all still in favor of TQQQ. So can't be surprised if all of a sudden this thing begins to take off, it would completely make sense. 
So that's, that's what we're looking out for. We're just looking for signs of progress. T. Rogers, exactly why I love LVP. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, so um, I, I hope that today's session can be exciting, especially in comparison to yesterday's live session. Um, but again, I do this every day. So there's days that we, well, Monday through Friday, right, when the market's open. Uh, there's days that markets are very just clear, Market direction is very clear, and it's just easy to trade easier. Then there's days like this where we kind of start off very choppy. We don't, you know, we're overbought and we're consolidating now. So I don't know if it's going to continue to rally, right? So it's like days like this where we're kind of just sitting on the sidelines waiting for the market to choose a side. So nonetheless, if, if you like what you see, and you want to experience this every day, I want to remind you in the description, the second link in the description will get you $175 off whenever you're ready uh, to join our LVP team. So nice pullback below EMA, testing that same general support range for TQQQ. Still no break below, right? We're still holding above 361. No signs of progress below that. So... It's not showing progress above either, but it's not showing much progress below. So this EMA is beginning to curl over, but it's not super important as long as we continue to hold above the moving average. So that's going to be the big question. Appreciate that, Fernie. Happy that you enjoy being a part of our LPP team. All right, testing same zone. Watch, look at that, all in one candle, gaining it all back. Watch for new highs. Check this out. Let's see what we get here. Testing highs. Are we gonna make new highs, right? This is our previous resistance range. And it shows signs of progress. It took all this time to drop it down here to 361 and it gained it all back in just two minutes. So if that isn't proof to show that the bulls are still present, right? Then I don't know what is. So right now it looks like both sides are putting up a fight. This is risky because direction is very unclear. We haven't had a choppy start to the morning like this. So Chicago PMI report came out. I'm sure that that was a factor of uh, this green candle, but to give it all back in one minute, doesn't look like it helped out too much. Chicago PMI came out at 44.1 with the expectation at 48.3. So lower than what was expected, causing the market to rally with one green candle to give it all back. Now we're on that third candle. Still nothing. Ah. <sighs> What are we thinking? Big picture, last day of the month, last trading day of the week. Is it the last trading day of the quarter? I don't know. I'll have to double check. But um, overall week, so Friday, 
Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. We are closing. Uh, we are closing in the green uh, or above where we opened at for the week. So barely. So we'll see if that right. We like to call that headline momentum. We'll see if that continues. Here it goes. Watch watch for new highs. New highs on QQQ. We're up 1.16, 1.15%. That is in favor for the bulls. Huge green candle. Wow. Out of nowhere. Look at that. Wild. Be careful. I mean, it looks sketchy. Watch it give it all back. Will we hold? Watch for a big red candle. See if we retrace back down to Still holding above old resistance, acting as a new potential support. Let's see if we hold above. This is way more fun than trading alone. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, trading alone comes with its perks, but yeah, I mean, trading itself can be pretty lonely. So uh, I know some people are asking, Ricky, why aren't you buying? Why aren't you buying? One green candle is not, I mean, it, this is a big green candle, but again, this is what some people view as like, oh my God, I need to get in. I've been burned so many times by jumping in into the hype and then it just corrects itself, right? Um, I need progress. I want progress. And progress is not in just one one candle. It's not just one minute of progress. It's not overall progress. So I need higher highs and higher lows. Remember, I'm not in a rush. We have all day today. So I'm I'm willing to stay patient. I'm willing to make it happen. I just want direction to be clear and I want it to be consistent. This is not consistent to me. If it's consistent for you and it meets your criteria, I'm not, I'm not here to convince you, right? You trade what you want. You're an adult. You can do whatever it is that you want. For myself, I, I don't want to put myself in a um, too risky of a position that I, I don't want to tolerate, you know? There it goes, holding above, right? Old resistance, new support. Are any more reports coming? Yep, we have one more in eight minutes. We have the uh, uh, Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report. Again, not a super, super important report, but it does affect the market, right? 
we might see quick little movements, some volatility. <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. You don't need friends when you have a cat by your side. Oh boy. Wow. Consumer sentiment, we have four minutes left. No, I mean, it's, it's holding above, right? What do you guys think for QQQ? Going back up to previous highs. I want to buy a TQQQ, but I want to wait for a little bit of a pullback. Okay. Oh, man. We're up 3.5% on TQQQ.
Is anyone else thinking that the market's just a little bit too slow? All right, here it goes. Let's see if we get a nice push here for new highs. Maybe this could be a potential entry. All right, new highs here. just to come back all right i'm just gonna get 1500 shares ready if we get a nice little breakout great <laughs> i i just know i'm gonna end up regretting it by entering too early Here we go, 3687, All right, we got a few seconds left until, yeah, 10 seconds left until the consumer sentiment report is out, right? Michigan consumer sentiment, just heads up on that. A few seconds left. Every economic report has been pushing the market up, so it won't surprise me if we make new highs. Let's see what we do. Again, not much of a catalyst. It drove the price up a little bit. There it goes, 36.88. We're gonna get 36.90. all to give it back yeah wow frustrating we're gonna have to host another live session because this one's so boring okay Getting close to that 4% mark. Are we going to do this? $37 for TQQQ. Watch for new highs. And that is 1.1%. Dude, I do not care for that. Report is green. Yep. Same. 68.1. Expectation was 67.7. So isn't that funny? Report comes out red, causes market to go up. Report comes out green, causes market to go up. Too good. Everything. 
everything. Market goes up today, which again, on the one hour time frame, we set up pretty nicely here, right? Now we're going to approach that moving average. Let's look at the four hour time frame. Now we're above the four hour EMA, pretty significant. Uh, now working our way towards that day chart. There it goes, resistance right at $37. Who would have thought? Who would have thought $37 would have been a slight little resistance? <laughs> Still holding. All right, so slight sign of a resistance at $37, showing signs of a potential pullback. Uh, we'll see how low we correct ourselves this time. The first stage would be right around previous highs, right, which is around 36.83. So when we pull on back, just watch for potential support there. If we break below, below that, 36.75, break below that, then it's going to be right around previous highs, which is right around where that EMA is at, at 36.67, if we show any signs of progress. But as of right now, the market's so slow. Guys, I am, I mean, I can't control the market, but I apologize nonetheless for the boring live stream. I, I mean, I want to trade for you guys, but I also need to remind myself that I'm not trading just to trade. I have to trade when it makes sense to me, and I just... I have not seen a proper setup. Like this was an uh, this was a nice push, but even in a perfect world, right when it broke above EMA to overall highs, this is a 1.3 percent move, 1.2 percent. Uh, so it's not like I'm, you know, we missed out on a, a huge, huge play. Um, I'm just, I don't know if it's just me. You guys, let me know in the live chat. I don't know if I'm sold on the market going up just yet. Right, I've been waiting this whole time. It's just, it's the last day of the month. It's the last day of the quarter, uh, last day of the week. We'll see. We'll see if we get it. Um, I just feel like it's setting up for signs of a potential bull trap. Just these pullbacks are too strong for it to be this bullish, right? How can it be this bullish? And then it pulls back this hard. Like there is selling pressure. And then that's what I just don't want to get caught with right i don't want to be someone that oh yeah i'm just gonna buy because it's green and then catch it as a falling knife i think not trading is a good lesson to learn yeah it's a good lesson for those that are experienced but for those that are watching for the first time they're like ricky what the heck they're like trying to poke me with a the stick they're like do something man um but yeah i mean there's there's days that are worth trading there's days that are not I, I'm, I'm sorry that I couldn't make it happen today on being super entertaining. Um, we're just going to have to do this again, right? Well, I do this every day with our LPP team. Um, you guys got a taste of what it was like yesterday, a very active day, right? It was a one-hour session, very active. But then we have moments like this where it's like watching paint dry. 
So I think the, the whole point definitely though is to encourage you to be aware of when to strike and when not. So all right. Yeah, I don't juggle either, right? If you guys get the inside joke from yesterday. If they want real, this is part of trading. It's it's not all about money coming in. I agree. Yep. Important thing is that you stick to your plan even if you lose or make money. <laughs> What's going on, Dusty? So Facebook removed poke options, so did Ricky. Yep. All right, looks like we were traced right back to the previous low here. All right, bouncing right off that EMA. We'll see if we get these higher, um, this is forming a higher low, so it's a pretty decent setup for TQQQ. Um, I would just be careful if it forms a lower high here, right? And then it comes right back down and it sells off. That would be progress for SQQQ. So again, it can go either way right now. I'm, I'm uncertain if we're, right? I'm not sold that market's gonna continue to, uh, rally because all I have to work with is from where the market opened at. You might be like, well, Ricky, TQQQ is up 3.4%. Well, it opened up already 3% in the green, right? I didn't hold the position overnight, so I couldn't partake in any of that. But from where the market opened to where we're at right now, it's open, it's gapped up 0.62%. So if you're like, oh man, I've missed out because I haven't entered TQQQ, I want to remind you, it's not just about how much it's up on the day. Based off of how much it's up on the day is based off of yesterday's close to today's open. But if you didn't hold the position overnight, right, because you didn't want to carry over that risk, then you, you can't benefit from that. So you can't take that into consideration. I wouldn't take that into consideration. Um, it's where we opened at to where we are at right now. And that's an increase of 05 06 and if it corrects itself, then again, we're back to that break even from open. And I think that's the big thing to take into consideration is, you know, to not um, put yourself down when we obviously have so little to work with as of right now. Ricky, why do you use the one minute time frame? Yeah, I use the one minute. I go back and forth between the one and the five. Uh, just that right at market open, obviously on the five minute, it's not gonna be super, super useful because when market opens, you know, normal trading hours are sometimes much different than pre-market or extended hours. So I wouldn't have much to go off of um, on the five minute, right? But as we get into the one hour to the two hour into the market, then I start transitioning into the five minute and just making sure it all makes sense. And there goes really nice bounce going back to retest that same resistance at 36.85. Let's see if we show signs of progress. This would be in favor of the bulls if it continues to gap up. If not, nope, there it goes. Pulling on back. Ah. Uh. Ricky, why did you change your EMA to 50? I changed it yesterday because I wanted to wait for more proper confirmation. So I explained it in yesterday's live stream. If you're part of our LPP team, you would have seen that live. So so when you talk about you're going to enter a swing trade, are you referring to TQQQ or QQQ? So I personally like to trade TQQQ, but just because I choose to take that risk does not mean that you need to, right? My swing trade is my swing trade. It's not yours. 
I don't know what other people say here on YouTube about their trades or how they try to convince other people to take their trade, like take the same trades. I would highly encourage you not to do that, right? You learn nothing by copying people. If you don't understand the trade opportunity, if you have no proper risk management, if you have no proper price target, take profit, risk management, it's just like, it's not going to work, right? If you're not putting in the work to understand what you're doing, it's just not going to work. So um, don't take the trade just because I'm taking it. If it makes sense to you, then great. I hope that you know me sharing an idea is something that maybe sparked your interest or brought awareness to something, but it all still comes down to you and your ability to make sense of, hey, does this meet my criteria based off of what I'm okay with exposing myself to risk, right? So again, I, I would always discourage you to copy someone, including myself. And, and I think that's the big misconception from a lot of people is that Ricky, um, they, they like to say like, oh, Ricky says watch him trade live, but he doesn't want you to copy him. It's like a comment that I've seen before. And it's like, yes, I don't know about you and how you learn, but I do learn best by watching people do, right? Because I want to understand their why. But it's not because I need to copy what they're doing. But I think that just uh, differentiates those that are so close-minded that all they've ever done in their life is copy, right? Just like they've done in school, maybe just like they've tried to do in life. And it's maybe why they're at in a place in life that is not very fulfilling. If you truly want to be self-sufficient, be honest with yourself. You're not going to be copying, right? No one that's successful in anything needs to be copying someone step by step, you know, along the way. There, there's so, some form of like being self-sufficient that is needed to be able to do this on your own. Now, of course, I love having you guys here in these live streams. I love having you guys on our YouTube channel. All that is great, but at the end of it, you're still trying to trade, trying to learn how to trade, right? And the idea should be never to rely on someone, on callouts, on entries, on exits. It's if you watch even just yesterday's live session where I was actually taking trades, right? Because things met my criteria. I was explaining my thought process throughout the entire, you know, uh, live live session. Where I explained why I was buying, I explained what I was, why I was adding more. So it's not just I'm buying here, I'm selling here, I'm cutting losses here, I'm buying more here. It's there's there's thought behind it, right? There's a why behind it. And I think that's the biggest difference. Where if you actually pay attention, and you're not just, you know, did he buy? Did he buy? Did he sell? How much did he buy? Right. Um, it makes the big difference. Right. But I, I feel like we could all see that. We could all see that based off of how someone asks questions and their eagerness to actually want to learn how to do this or someone that just wants to try to make a quick buck as soon as possible. And at least in my experience, it just doesn't work that way. My personal trading plan is to copy you. <laughs> you guys crack me up. All right, looks like we're testing our EMA indicator here for TQQQ, right? We should be testing it also for QQQ. MACD's looking good, RSI's looking good. I want to, but again, these indicators mean nothing. It's all based off of price action. Are we going to show progress on the downside or are we going to show signs of a support and begin to pick up, right? This is a what I like to call like a critical point because right here we can pivot. We can begin to reverse back up or we can pivot and begin to reverse down and form lower lows and lower highs, which would be great for the bears, which would not be the best for the bulls. Make sense? All right, testing previous support. Let's see if we can get a nice little sell signal.
How do you just uh, decide whether to sell Tikihiki or buy Askihi? Are you asking Kim? Kim, are you asking like how do you decide to go long on something or to go short on something? I wouldn't. Right, if market's going up, I would go in TQs. If market's going down, I would go in SQs. Uh, it's very rare that you would ever see me short the actual ETF itself. Right. I don't see there to be any benefit in shorting an ETF if I can just trade the inverse of it. Make sense? If you didn't know, they're inverses of one another. One goes up when the other one goes down, and they're exact inverses of one another. As close to exact as it can get. Yep, good question. All right, we got a decent red candle here. Can we break below that super trend? I grow NQ futures. Uh, you're not interested. It's more volatile, but a little bit. Yeah, I don't personally trade futures myself, but it's fits. I just have heard that they're a little bit more risky, but yeah, they could pay out a little bit more. Uh, I just trade with a specific dollar amount, right? I got asked yesterday, Ricky, you should trade options. Um, I just. I don't, I, I don't like to expose myself to more risk. Um, I like focusing on trying to be as consistent as possible and taking risk management into consideration. And any more risk is just not something that I want to uh, open myself to. So hope that you understand that. If, that, if you want to choose to be more aggressive because it meets your trading style or you work well with it, I want to always encourage you. I don't, you know, this is my live session. This is like my group, right? I have a specific way that I trade, but you will never hear me say that, oh my, it's my way or the highway, right? I have a specific way that I know that works well for me. Um, if you want to try something, if you want to try a completely different market, whatever the case might be, I will never discourage you not to do it. Uh, you're an adult. I mean, you can do whatever it is that you want. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just happy that you see value in, in our content enough to you know spend time with us and hopefully we can just continue to share ideas with one another we don't have to be trading the same thing right and i think that's what what needs to be understood is that there's a lot of different ways to make money in this market that still get that same end result and that's making money and being consistent i hope that's the end result that you guys are working towards here it goes sell signal but it continues to break back above Do you journal every day or weekly or never? I journal, um, I try to every day. Um, they're, they're quick. I mean, it's it sounds like a law, like a large task, but it's not like uh, yesterday, one of my main points that I made in my trading journal, I had a green day, right? Uh, within one hour, I made 13.7K. Um, I really enjoyed the session. Uh, but one thing that I talked about is I took an initial entry that was still before confirmation. And my journal, um, I stated, I wanna be more calculated and waiting for confirmation even before my initial entry. So instead of trying to catch the whole range of the opportunity, I wanna be okay with giving up a portion of that for the sake of not entering too early. Um, and again, I'm always just trying to make micro adjustments after every trade and potentially every day, right? Um, like as of right now, what would I say that like right now I'm, I'm happy that I've stayed this patient where from market open to where we're at right now, it's pretty much break even there, there has been no progress, right? Yeah. We had a nice little rally up market direction was bearish and then it was bullish. It quickly changed. I'm, I'm, a, I'm human, right? I'm never going to be perfect. Uh, now we've pulled on back. So now it's showing signs of progress on the downside. Now, if we sell off to the moving average, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, just like last time it sold off close to the moving average. So what I'm thinking is if it sells off again to the moving average and begins to validate that as a support, I will entertain the idea of entering TQQQ. Make sense? At that point, if it sells off to the moving average, I now know what my top range is. I now know what my bottom range is. And for TQQQ, it's very easy to calculate. Oh, wow. You know, instead of potentially only being able to make, you know, half of a percent from market open to our peak, I can now potentially make 1.55%, a little bit more attractive. 
still not huge margins, but at least I'm making my opportunity, my range of potential profit, right? Percentage wise, a little bit greater. Why didn't you buy in on the initial rally? I wasn't sold. I, I mean, it's very easy to see now, right? But market was pulling back a little bit and we just opened. There's a lot of consolidation here. I wasn't sold that on the idea that this thing was going to take off. If I if I would have known, yeah, I, I would have would have jumped in. I, I was not. I was not sold that this thing was going to continue to. And when it popped off, it popped off so quick that it, right? If I didn't catch it within the first one, two seconds, it corrected itself and then it formed higher highs. So this would have been the true range that I would, would have had to work with. So there it goes. Nice little sell, sell off close to the moving average. And we'll see if that's what we test. You were right. Yep. I mean, yeah, we, we pulled on back to the moving average. Now it's looking like it's selling off a little bit more. Look at that. Ooh. Testing moving average. Oh, it's looking like it's going to break below. Right? Have no fear. The bears are here. How are we feeling about this? Anyone happy about it? I want to see where my um, bears are at. How much is LPP? Uh, LPP is normally, uh, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. Um, it's normally full price at $499, so pretty much $500. Bucks. Uh, but right now we have a $175 off sale. It's the second link in the description down below. And it's our biggest sell that I offer. So there's no discount that's bigger. So if you like what you see, even on this slower day, if you like the idea of staying patient, or if you saw what you saw yesterday and you like the activity, this is what we do every day for about 30 minutes to an hour every day right at market open. Imagine being able to experience this daily whenever you want to tune on in. And if you don't watch it live, then you can always rewatch it as these videos are always saved only for our LPP team. So it's the second link in the description down below. If and when you're ready, no rush. It's $175 off today. Um, and yep, it should be linked in the description of this video. All right, we are testing support here. What are we thinking? Oh, more progress on the downside. Appreciate that, Magda. Thank you, thank you. All right. SQQQ creeping up. Yeah, let's pay attention to that very quickly. We had a nice run up, but again, we're still getting rejected by the moving average. So as of right now, it's still this is why we gotta be very careful. So I'm still paying attention to TQQQ right now. Seeing, seeing if we begin to show signs of a recovery. But now we're trading below the moving average, so I got to be careful here. So let's see if we break above. Get the order ready. Wow. All right, went in with 2,000 shares. That's about $73,000 in TQQQ. Let's see if we show signs of progress on the upside. Testing slight resistance at 36.50. Yeah, it shot up out of nowhere. It was at, at a general support range, so it's not out of nowhere, right? Ricky, don't go against me. I'm in SQQQ. It's okay. There's money to be made for both of us. And things are looking fair for you, right? Direction as of right now, it's just I have overall direction. But 
we are overbought, so it does run the risk of a potential pullback. So if we make new lows, then I will manage and mitigate that risk. Look at that, all the way back down. Wow. in support <laughs> uh, what exactly do you mean when TQQQ is lover bot no overbot overbot so when something is overbought, it's like this, right? It's overextended, and then it tends to correct itself. When something is oversold, right? It's sold off quite a bit within a very short period of time that it tends to recover. They don't have to. It's just good to understand overbought and oversold levels. We talk about these terms in the LPP lesson library. Loverbot means that you love TQQQ. <laughs> Oh man, that is too good. Of course, of course, Mackie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep using that phrase. I like that lover bot. We're, we're gonna hold on to that one. Uh, Ricky, explain the close to open thing that you spoke about. I don't know what you want me to explain, uh, Anthony. So this 2.7% is just based off of where the market closed at and where the market opened at. If you did not carry a position overnight, right? If you began and opened your position right when the market opened, you benefit nothing from the, the whatever it was up, 3% at this point. So this is a big misconception from a lot of people is that they often think, oh, wow, hey, the stock is green. It's in the green. It's going to continue to be in the green. But no, there are times that a stock is in the green and that by the time that the market actually opens, it's already so overbought that it begins to sell off for the remainder of the day. We've seen this so many times. So again, don't get it confused. There's a big difference of, you know, of a stock that is showing signs of continuous progress that is in favor for whatever it is that's in the green versus something that's in the green but is now descending, right? In the green, it's just based off of previous close and current price point. It is not based off of what is going to continue to happen. That's the big difference. Doing another 2,000 shares. TQQQ. Of course, Anthony, hope that makes sense, right? Because people, again... It's just beginners, right? They say, oh, 2.8%. It's in the green. It's going to continue to be in the green. I have seen it so many times. And please don't just even take my experience from it. Ask other people. There could be something that opens up in the green, but it sells off for the remainder of the day. So technically, you could have made no money on that and you were just sold on the face value of, hey, this is green. Versus I've seen things open up in the red, but all they do is begin to recover for the remainder of the day. Now, again, those are two textbook setups. It doesn't always happen that way. Uh, something can be in the red and continue to sell off. Something can be in the green and continue to rally. It's just understanding, are we showing signs of progress? That's why I talk about that so much. If your position is not showing signs of progress and you have an open position in that trade, then why, right? So if this thing is not actively making me money, I just opened up position on it, right, for TQQQ. If it's not actively making me money and not actively showing signs of progress, then why do I carry that open position, right? I want to be, I want to enter and exit that trade efficiently and effectively. It's not even about like this shouldn't even matter to me of how much 
it's not that it shouldn't because I mean, it's good to be aware of where that stock is based off of its percentage growth for the day, based off of average percentage growth for the day. So if you're already very close to the resistance, then you know maybe just another reason to sell. But it shouldn't be the, the only reason that you buy a stock or that you sell a stock, right? There has to be some form of indication. And the biggest thing is if something is continuously making you money, the thing can be up 10%. But if it continues to show signs of higher highs and higher lows, then again, that is progress. It makes sense on why you have that position open. But if something is lacking progress, yet you still have that position open, then again, ask yourself, why do you have that position open? If it's a trade, right? A day trade is a position that you intend to buy and sell within the same date, right? It's not an investment. A trade and an investment are two completely different things. They have different intentions, right? All right, slight signs of a resistance here. So maybe not the worst idea to potentially entertain the idea of getting out. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we get here. Looks like we might be getting rejected. Is this going to be a higher, a lower high? It might be. Looks like a lower high. I like that, Ivan. Good eye, good eye. And there it goes, getting rejected, giving it some cushion, some wiggle room. So, but sometimes a stock takes a breather. So, yep, I mean, there's corrections along the way, right? Just like this. It pushes up, it pulls on back, pushes up, pulls on back. I'm talking about nonstop consolidation. So when something continues to consolidate, you're obviously very overbought. And it's not just, oh, it's taking a breather, that it could be a potential break of pattern. You're overbought already and that you know that you've just came from a recent rally. That's what I'm talking about, where, again, at a specific point, you have to be able to or know when to take profits, right? So that's that's the biggest difference is how do you differentiate a a slight pullback versus a complete like break of pattern? Well, it's very easy to understand what a break of pattern is, right? Because there was something it was following a specific pattern on the way up and never broke below the EMA. It pulled on back, that's fine, but the pattern was still relevant right? Progress, progress, progress. And then it lacked progress, lacked progress, pulled on back again. And then we got to that EMA and then we broke below it, right? Very easy to see. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> TQQQ pulling on back. Ricky, how long do you stream every day? So with our LPP team, we do about 30 minutes to an hour every day. So every day, Monday through Friday, our job is just to be consistent, right, throughout the day. And then I'll post updates as they come and go, right? So if I'm specifically trading something, then I uh, we have a channel within our Discord named Trade Ideas that is just exclusive to our LPP team. So how come you don't watch gold, oil, and NASDAQ? Because I just trade. These ETFs are just NASDAQ ETFs. <clears throat> so if my trade is based off of NASDAQ, I don't necessarily need to pay attention to oil and gold. It's good to be aware of, I guess, where gold is at, right? Um, but it's not crucial. It's not crucial to tech. NASDAQ is a big focus as a composite of a basket of tech companies mainly, right? So...
All right, just going back to retest that EMA, trying to give it the cushion it needs, right? Are you still in a trade? Yeah, have you seen me sell? There are you guys asking me questions where you can see everything I'm doing. Are you not paying attention? Thanks for hanging in there today. Of course. Make him do push-ups. I don't have a stop loss set. Uh, my position size is light enough that if it does begin to sell off and I see a break of pattern and I see progress below the moving average, I'll just cut losses. I'll sell it individually. Uh, my stop loss I normally set if my position size is much larger. Um, and if there's more volatility, if I'm not paying attention as much, but I'm there's just one thing I'm paying attention to and it, it's this, right? So if I begin to see that it's selling off, I'll quick right my position size is light enough that i should be able to manage it myself it doesn't look like we're getting the break above the ema uh, we continue to retest, right? We've tested it here. We got rejected. We retested, retested, got rejected, retested, retested, got rejected. So I need to take a hint at least now. My position size is not, I mean, I'm pretty much break even right now for TQQQ. So yeah, I mean, it continues to teeter totter within a hundred or two hundred dollars in the green or in the red, which is again, just it's insignificant. Um, with the dollar amount that I'm trading with. So yeah, I just, moments like this, I again, try to remind myself, okay, maybe it's best to just exit the trade and then wait for a more clear opportunity. That's kind of what I'm thinking of doing right now, regardless of, am I gonna be a couple hundred in the green or a couple hundred in the red? I can make that back with one solid trade, right? So it's, it's good to, believe in yourself when you know that like, you're capable of it right you just want conditions i value those conditions more than i do value the three to four hundred bucks there it goes is that what you're talking about sebastian Getting rejected. Today is a bear's day. <laughs> Tony, first off, market's green. Second, we're still holding above the moving average. I mean, I get it, but no, right? On the 30 minute, we're above EMA and moving average. Five minute, we're above EMA and moving average. One minute, we're above the moving average. I don't know about what bear day you're talking about, but as of right now, not really. It can be though, right? It could break below the moving average, begin to show signs of progress on the downside. That's all possible. We don't have that yet, man. Today's a bull's day. It started off as a bull's day, but hey, we've seen it time and time again. It could be any any day, right? It could be start off as a bull's day and it could end as a bear's day. So, you know, you know this market's super volatile. Let's not pretend like it's not. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll keep you guys up to date on the trade ideas. I'm gonna grab a quick snack. Um, so again, if you're part of our LPP team, uh, just cause I'm going to walk away, I'm going to set a stop loss here. So 
Um, my stop loss, I probably want to set it. Um, I really wouldn't even care to set it a little bit closer. So maybe at 43, just to make sure, right, that it follows at some distance below the moving average, but not too, too much. So I'll set the stop loss there, meaning that if it breaks or touches 43, it will automatically get filled. Um, I'll keep you guys up to date in the trade ideas for all those that are part of our all PP team. I really do apologize for today's stream being a little bit on the slower side. Uh, I can't control the market. I wish I could. I'd make it very exciting for you guys, uh, but I can only work with what I'm given. So um, really challenged our ability to stay patient and our ability to um, wait for more of a proper setup. But it even looks like right now, like we're, we're not sold on super clear direction. I don't know if it's going to sell off. I don't know if it's going to begin to recover. So when in doubt, don't be afraid to pull out, cash out, stay cash. Um, and I just know when to be patient. I think that's the biggest thing is we focus so much. I know I focus so much. I guess I can't speak for you, for you guys, but I feel like we all can maybe do a little bit better trading less and focusing more on quality setups. And I think that's a great uh, motto to live by, right? Waiting for more ideal setups because we all know that right at market open, when we take that initial trade, direction's not super clear. We're almost just hoping to get lucky. So um, I'm I'm here to work on, on my craft every day and I hope that you guys are too. And I would love for you guys again to join us for these live sessions so we can work on it together. So second link in the description down below, I wanna remind you LPP is a one-time payment, lifetime access. You get to watch me trade live every day just like this. And um, yeah, you also get access to our A to Z video lesson library that's designed for complete beginners. So whenever it is that you feel like you are ready, second link in the description down below. And if you have any questions before joining, shoot me a direct message via Discord, which is the first or third link in the description down below if you prefer to message me via Instagram. So like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy.